What are some harsh truths about dating in 2024 that people got to understand? And maybe a more important question is, what can people do about it? Yeah, everybody's talking about this from uh, formal news platforms all the way to self-produced stuff like whatever podcast. Andrew, we are referring to the gender wars. Incel versus femcel. I didn't even know about the femcel term. Volcel too. Andrew, chads versus baddies versus stacies. Hypergamy versus old village dating that your parents went through. Wow, so that's kind of the landscape here. We have three main truths that people need to understand. And then we're going to give you the comment section and our own conclusions and possible solutions because I think that's one thing that is missing from a lot of these conversations. A lot of people can point out what's happening or observe what's happening and say, oh, this is what I think is happening. This is what I've seen happening. But not that many people have solutions or at least ideas, right? Right. So anyway, let's just get into the harsh truths, Andrew. This reminds me of people saying, you know, both sides, Democrats and Republicans have it wrong. For example, uh, Democrats don't have a brain. Republicans don't have a heart. This is going to break it down in a similar fashion that doesn't make it all lopsided. Point number one, this guy says, hypergamy is real, but only because men have a higher sex drive and thus lower standards for short-term relationships. Quality long-term relationships are similarly hard for both genders. Okay, so David, uh, what's the definition of hypergamy uh, in 2024? Because I think that for every term, there's like an older term from whenever that word was invented, like let's just say the 1960s, for example, I don't know if that was when right. it, hypergamy was coined, but it probably is a little different nowadays. Well, let's be honest. Like you said, there's the 1960s Webster's Dictionary definition, and then there's the Urban Dictionary version, right? right. So in the dictionary, it's defined as the action of marrying or forming a sexual relationship with a person of a superior sociological or educational background. So I think back when this term was coined, probably the educational background meant that you were of a higher socioeconomic class. You know, this is back when maybe not as many people went to college. Uh, so it's like if you did have an education, you probably did wet better. This is kind of like saying that I guess back then, like women want to marry usually a man who is smarter than them and more well to do. Right, right, right. And you could argue that that was uh, when there was mid-stage capitalism where uh, wealth and sort of like th like regular, just a good everyday lifestyle was actually kind of hard to get. Right. But nowadays, Andrew, a lot of people theorize that in late, late stage capitalism, hypergamy pretty much refers to hypergamy of looks or wow. status combined with looks. Ah, so it could be money, status, and looks all combined in a different, I'm sure different people have a different uh, ratio of all those. Right, things. right, right. Basically the caste system of modern day society more goes towards looks than like having your life together and having a bunch of real estate properties. That's what this guy is saying. And you're saying that that is a fairly true. That is fairly true for America in 2024 in the dating market, especially on an app like Tinder or something like that. Right. I will say this though. He says hypergamy is real, but then he kind of flips it on the guys and says, but that's only because men statistically, scientifically have a higher sex drive and thus lower standards for short-term relationships. So he's saying the reason why, according to this chart, guys are more willing to take like, I guess like lesser women on the pyramid than women are willing to take lesser men is because they just got to get it in. Well, because men generally probably want even like more partners. So they're going to lower their standard in a way to meet that number because guys just want it that bad. It's like a lot of guys will hook up or get with a girl who they actually know in their minds is maybe below their league, but they'll do it anyways because they just want a sh something short-term and fun. Right. Um, so overall, I mean, what do you think? Do you do you agree, disagree with this point? Because this this is guy this guy's assertion. So he's kind of like giving one to the guys because the guys are always like, hypergamy, hypergamy, right? But then he's like, but then that's the reason why. Yeah, I mean, that, I, th I think guys do need to take a little bit more responsibility in that aspect that if all men, and especially the ones that are desirable, only just want more and more women to date, then that is only going to mess up the game for everybody else because it wasn't supposed to be like that. No, it was supposed but to now, go like across the ladder, right? With money and social media, you can like, one guy can invite like two or three girls out and date three, four girls at once. So, but that's on that guy choosing to do that. Right. Like women typically... I feel like they're not, even if they have money, they're not flying out five different guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I think that, yeah, it's interesting 
that just the thing that gives somebody like cast value shifted right. from uh, economic right. educational to right. looks. But, but I also think that it's not just hypergamy of looks because I think different women have different uh, considerations of what marrying up is. And I think for some women who don't need any sort of financial help from a man, they're just maybe going to look for the most charming, best looking, handsome guy that makes them feel like they're in a dream world. Or, but if you are a woman who more needs mm. like financial security, then you're going to more value a man's like ability are, to make money. Are you saying that people have like diff their different puzzle pieces? So they're looking for the puzzle piece that completes the areas they might feel like they're they need yeah, somebody I to fill those marrying, the lacking in or whatever. Exactly. I think hypergamy and marrying up still is like a different reason, a mixture pie for everybody. Right, right, right. That's a good point. Maybe he's talking about the, the, the bulk distribution. Anyway, who knows? I'm not saying I fully agree with this guy. I just thought it was an interesting post. Point number two, he goes on to say, looks are the most important aspect of attraction, but generally, proportionally, men care about them more than women do. If you're an ugly man, being a sweet, nice guy will not matter very much, which is where the confusing comes from. But things like charisma and status absolutely do matter. And then he goes on to say, but if you are an ugly woman, I think you are screwed. Dang. But you will still be able Dang. to get short-term hookups because back to point number one, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, all right, so here's... Do I fully agree because I think that you always heard that, oh, there's always a woman that can... A woman can always get a man, but there's not always a woman for every man. But Meaning, a woman can always get a, a man, man to at least have a short-term fling with for sure. Or, I mean, I just think that there's... I don't know. I, I think that even like a really unappealing woman is still in a way better off than an unappealing man. I don't know. I, this one's tough, I guess. This one's tough to say. I will say this. I agree with his initial statement that in 2024, looks is the number one thing on the priority list for both the man and the woman. But that pie slice that's dominant might even is probably even bigger for guys. Yeah. I mean, I think looks is kind of like it is important because it's the first thing you see it's the surface thing it's when you're swiping through an app that's what the first thing you look at before their profile you know well, some people don't even read the profile right yeah maybe some apps they should have the photos at the bottom and you got to like click through the prompts before you see the photo <laughs> no you that have to swipe right on the prompts first yeah like you have to swipe right on one of their prompts and then you see their face and that that would be interesting but i don't know how many people would use that app uh, but i guess that like um yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, but it's it's because it's a. Uh... I know what he's saying at the end. I'd actually disagree with his second statement. I think there's a lot more nuance to it. But he's saying that a guy that's ugly can make up for it with money, personality, and charisma. But a girl can't make up for it with money, personality, and charisma. But I don't even know if that's true. I, 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 I think yeah. it's different, but I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna go ahead and say for point number two, I don't fully agree. I agree more with point number one, but I don't really agree with point number two. Right. And by the way, I do think, I think every woman's stack is different, but I think that this is a good generalized stack of that two women looks is determined by race, face, height, frame, body, personality, status, clothing, and then money. Like well, that's what I women, think. women, race is number one. I think so. Cause I think that a lot of girls will filter out entire races completely off. The oh, bed. you mean a girl judging guys? Yeah. Girl judging guys. That's their stack. And you have to hit everything along down oh, the stack. Okay. Uh, uh, you guys let us know what you think about David's ranking. I don't know. By the way, guys, obviously, dude, of course, everybody yeah. in life is different, by the way. Yeah, what I was going to say, sorry, uh, is that looks is really more for your feeling and dopamine. You know, it looks technically, obviously, is a visual thing and we're visual creatures, but like really, it's like when someone's just really hot, you're just like, you're just get infatuated. And you just have all these dreams and you're just like no, dreaming dude, of being are, with are you thinking of movies and shows and no. stuff and, and move video game characters you yeah, like? Yeah, you just grown? fit it into your fantasy. And I think maybe women do that more than men, but men obviously do that a lot too. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, the guys who want a Laura Croft or something. I don't know, who knows? Uh, point number three, this is his point. Technology, economic inequality, and atomization are effing over the dating market for both genders. A lot of blue pill advice parents give them... Uh, basically bad advice because it was true from when they were growing up. Basically the parents were growing up in a time where like the pyramids would match up and there was a hypergamy, but for different reasons. And there was just the, the whole fish bowls that they were pooling from were way smaller. And then you get your dating advice from your parents and that's just really bad advice 
for people in modern day. So their dating advice is outdated is what you're saying. Yes, basically. And that's causing a lot of resentment because then people go through situations where stuff didn't work. They get jaded by those experiences and then they might pendulum swing the opposite way. No, you mean it's like a guy saying like, yeah, growing up, my mom said, just work hard in school and you'll have your pick of the litter. Any girl's going to be happy to have you, son. You just keep working hard. You get a job. You be a good man and women are going to fall at your feet. Well, that's what a lot of parents do tell their kids, right? Or at least from the from the older generation. Yeah. But yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that like a lot of people, they, if they apply that and then they feel burned by that advice, they could swing in the opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, the old days of how our parents or grandparents dated like in the village of like, hey, like this woman is, I mean, that's like how some countries are like, you know, like parents pair them up. Like, you know, some South Asian families, they're still trying to do some form of like a uh, arranged marriage. Well, there's like Netflix shows about it. Yeah. It's still happening in some cultures, you know, but uh, yeah, when left up to the free market, then it just feeds in the people's uh, most base level desires and what they need at the time. And I th really think um, dating is messed up for both men, men and women, by the way. Men and women are both struggling with this. In America in yes. 2024. You hear men and women both complain, guys. Now, we could argue about who has it worse or oh, men suffering more than women. It is bad for both sides. It's tough and difficult. But the only way... I really see it changing as like people focusing on creating a family because that forces you to happily compromise and to build a partnership. It's like building a business when if you don't ever want to be a business owner, if you never want to be in charge of an LLC and pay taxes and get a proper accountant and then build out and rent an office space, if you never want to be a business owner, then you're never going to like care about what happens in the like on certain streets in the city because you're like I don't live there. No, no. That's typically, not, no, business no. owners are super invested in local politics. Yeah, because their local are, politics affect their business. Exactly, exactly. So you're not as invested. But when you are ha trying to have a family, then you're invested in a whole bunch of different aspects of life, and therefore you're going to more compromise and look at other aspects of this person to see if they're going to be a good partner. But if you only want short term and fun, then yes, people will look for the most base level thing which is looks and fun and feeling of course there was some funny jokes Andrew. someone said oh god who cares just become a drug addict or become a gym guy just like everybody else dang I, hey that is funny that he identified two trending identities and archetypes in 2024 though damn drug addict or gym bro hilarious all right so we went through the three main harsh truths that this guy listed out uh we didn't fully agree with all of them or at least i didn't in my opinion but i think that there is some truth to all of it and that is how a lot of people see the dating market right now. Right, right, right. And I think that that's maybe why guys are going overseas. Maybe girls are um, getting more work done than ever to raise their SMV to play into- You mean visual enhancements. You mean beauty enhancements. Are those two things not at an all-time high, right? Like, yeah, yeah, for the, sure. The passport broism and the whatever, the plastic surgery. Alterations, right? yeah. The um, surgery. I will say this. Right now, it feels like- and I don't know a lot of people are going to be sick of this. It feels a little bit like Democrats and Republicans where everybody's going for the 10 and 0 win. I get 10 points, you get zero points. But Andrew, if people had a growth mindset, would they accept you getting six points? Let's say we're in a rivalry. I get six points. So technically there's more, there's a growth mindset because now there's 12 points of distribution, but neither party is happy at a six and six. And how much would the pie need to grow? Would, would people... I think people are unwilling to compromise on the 10 and 0 structure, even if it's six and six. But what if it was seven and seven and there was 14 points on the board? What does that look like? For example, just give us an example. Like oh. people kind of like, yeah, yeah they just get a comp because seven is obviously in the middle. The seven is usually considered like- You mean seven out of 10 happiness. Yeah, like seven out of 10. Because I'm saying right now, guys, if they go overseas, they're going to get 10 and 0, right? Or they're going to get their 10. You mean- And then like women, if they hyper play into, you know, play the current system of hypergamy on the dating apps or whatever- maybe if they hold out long enough, they'll get like a nine or a 10 out of 10 match for what their dream was. But then that leaves on a macro scale, the other gender feeling like they got screwed. You mean everybody's basically trying to take advantage of the leverage that they have as much as possible. Yes. It seems like. Like yeah, a yeah, woman yeah. who gets really beautiful, gets the glow up, gets the enhancements, gets the makeup, gets the clothes. Acts like Lori Harvey. And, and yeah, and, and, starts and playing out Michael B. Jordan's. Puts herself out on social media. Then she's gonna, the, the feeling is that she's going to try to take advantage 
of that as much as possible. She's going to get flown out, get a, get a bunch of messages, going to try to date a bunch of like well-off guys, whatever. That's the feeling, right? And then same with a guy who's tall, good looking, has a little bit of money. He's going to expose his advantage as much as, as much as possible. Each person that has leverage is trying to to squeeze it, juice it the most. It's almost like the Las Vegasization of everywhere that's not Las Vegas. Because Las right. Vegas bottle girls have been dating tech billionaires on the side forever, right? David, you mean take everything and give them nothing. Right. All right, so here's the thing. Here's my final takeaway. Listen, guys, there's a lot of culture wars going on right now, whether that's white versus black, woman versus man, old prejudice guard versus new anarchist leadership. And I'm not the one person who's going to say that these culture war debates that, you know, whatever podcast is engaging in, or there's a trillion of these podcasts nowadays, I'm not going to say that they're mindless. But here's the thing, Andrew. You're arguing, but nobody really controls their side. People may control the emotional apparatus or the narrative or the storyline of their side, but they cannot control any individual other than themselves. Mm. But they're making a lot of money controlling the narrative of their side. Right, right, right. But that's why it's crazy because you're a leader of the narrative of your side. I'm the leader of my side. We're both making money arguing about it, but nothing's happening on an individual scale because like, you're only control of your own life. You're saying that there's no money in the solutions, actually. There's just money in the debate and the argument. Yeah, and, and playing like you're the leader of yeah. a side. Because no. Andrew Tate, yeah, he might be able to influence people, but he literally do not does not control or nor would he want to control anybody. Yeah. 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 So that's what I'm saying, where I'm saying that, yeah. So well, I guess that's where we're at. So is there a solution? Do you have a solution? I think just even a made up, so even a solution that's... Just throw one out there. So just, we're just probably being us. like India and just getting going back to the. Why don't we go back to the arranged marriages? Why did we yeah. ever let it go away? Yeah, I'm, hey, say, hey. I'm, I'm saying if you statistically look at the divorce rates, it's super low and people are super happy because that's what they know. Well, I and they feel like they're I, being what they were meant oh, to be. Okay, I don't know if every Indian parent is happy, but they are gladly still in that thing or at least they're still in that they're still committed yeah at the end of the day, and if we were to control the equation for that being the goal i'm not so, saying that's not my goal but no, i'm just saying but to solve this algorithm but, but i think the root of the issue and i'm going to say this again is that people don't want to get married and have kids and have a family because when you have a family you need structure and you need to work with another person and you need support and there's all these other things that you think about when you get older that when you're young and just having but people are getting married and having kids later in life or not at all so remember like back in people had got married at like 24 they had kids when they were like 28 and that was how it often was like in the 80s and 70s that was pretty much like how it went but now as you would delay that need, and sometimes some people are deleting that need, let alone delaying it, then there's no need for that structure in your life. Therefore, you can just fly around and date whoever as much as you want, spend the money and live on your own because you're not, you don't care about having a family. The only thing that's really going to make men and women more bring them back down to earth and make them compromise and work together more is really raising families and kids. Right. I think so. And That's I it. Think That's that the only if thing. If people in late, late, late stage capitalism are dopamine and enjoyment driven, somehow the raising of kids would have to be more enjoyable than the alternative. Right. So the, my question is, how do you make raising a family look more appealing? Or can you? That's a good That's question. What, yeah. That, but, but it's the same thing that Japan's going through on a different level. Like Japan is going through this negative birth rate, people not marrying thing, but kind of for different reasons. But like essentially, Amer also a late, late stage capitalism yeah. e economy though. America's going through it too though. So, but it, for slightly different reasons, but essentially the root of the issue is the same thing. People don't want to have families together. So, hey guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'm sure the comments section is going to be lit. Until next time, we the Hot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.